Good morning, BookTube, YouTube. This is Johnny. Thought I'd make a video <clears throat> because it's been a day. I thought I'd make a video, what, Sunday? And today is a Friday. Friday the 13th, 2023. It is 10.27 in the morning on a Friday. Outside, it's cold, dreary, rainy, dark, miserable, dismal, and uh, as is my habit, I'm writing in my online diary. No, I'm not my online diary, my paper diary. I'm on page 907. <clears throat> Usually, I write in my online diary in the afternoons. But what this video is going to be is <clears throat> talking about, well, I've shown you my thrift store haul the last couple of weeks. I told you I had 30 books. I've, I did 10 and then I did another 10. And this is the last 10 of 30 here. Since we're going to have it, I was going to wait until Sunday, but then that's a new week. And, Tomorrow's a Saturday, and then there's a Sunday, and then I... I supposed to get a book in the mail today. I ordered from Amazon, but I thought what I would do is to show the last 10 books of those 30 used books from thrift stores and Blue Stockings Bookshop. Now, Blue Stockings Bookshop here in Holland, <clears throat> it's primarily used books. So... Um, I have taken books, Carol and I have taken books over there and got in-store credit. So sometimes I go over there, it's not that far from where we live, maybe 10 minutes. But I don't like to travel in bad weather. And I don't really like to leave the house. I don't mind going around where we live. You know, there are, like I told you, in where we live here in Holland, there's Legacy Thrift Store just a couple blocks up, and then the, down the street is Action House Thrift Store, and then there's Goodwill Thrift Store. Now, what I mean by thrift store, they sell furniture, they sell clothes, they sell knickknacks, they sell old vinyl records, they sell all kinds of stuff, but they also sell used books. So I, you know, so I just try to look once a week, and I usually find something. And uh, I think there's Legacy, there's Goodwill, there's Action House. And if I go North Holland, then there's Salvation Army, there's another, there's two other Goodwills, and there's uh, Humane Society, which is... Animal Rescue Thrift Store. There are a couple others that I don't really visit that often. Because I don't really need any more books. So, yeah, and then there's one in Finville. I just, the warehouse thrift store. Well, it's a warehouse used bookstore. And then there's, um, Finville Library has a room where they show books that they've taken out of circulation with draws. And sometimes we go to Douglas, there's a cat rescue place that's like a thrift store. They sell stuff to support rescuing cats and they have books, but we don't go that far. And sometimes we go to South Haven. Their library has a used bookstore called Cheap Stacks that we go when the weather's really nice, Carol and I. And in South ha I mean, in Grand Haven, there is a Goodwill and a couple of other thrift stores, but we, have, we don't do that on a regular basis. I can't afford new books. Now, I do buy some new books from Amazon. Usually, I, I pre-order them because, like I showed you, this book I had pre-ordered a while back, I like the New York Review 
books classics and so I've been reading this since I last made a video I've read 98 pages of lies and sorcery by Elsa Morant I think that's how I pronounce it and I, I did tell I did tell you I was going to read for a while the paper the life and death of the New York Herald Tribune by Richard Cal Calger, Cal Calger, I should look that up and pronounce that name. Cloger, Calcular. But so I've been reading those, and this morning I've been reading for devotion discourse concerning conscience, a heaven or hell upon earth by Nathaniel Benson, who lived well, 1639. To 1697. This has appeared in reprint. It's been edited and put into modern type, and it's not like it would look like in the 17th century. So I've been writing in my diary, 907, and I told you when I get coffee in the morning, there's little Tozer's uh, little book here, excerpts, which is from his book. The Pursuit of God by A. W. Tozer. And today, October the 13th, the meditation is, God is trying to get our attention to reveal himself to us, to communicate with us. We have within us the ability to know him, him if we will but respond to his overtures. We will know him in increasing degree as our receptivity becomes more perfect by faith and love and practice. So yeah, I'll show you the books. I'm not going to go much into them. This one I got from the fin Finville Warehouse bookstore. I think most of these, that's where they came from. This is Joseph Carlyle's Sator Rigorius and on heroes and hero worship. This is from the Everyman's Library. Th this is a real fine uh, it was in perfect condition, not marked up. I uh, like anything by Thomas Carlyle. Uh, anything by him. I wish I had his complete works in hardback. And then I found at the Finville Warehouse, I collect books in New York City, in New York, the Phoenix, the Manhattan Phoenix, the Great Fire of 1835 and the Emergence of Modern New York by Daniel S. Levy. Yeah, I, I've never been to New York City. I don't really have a desire to go there because I don't like leaving the house or even going around to thrift stores. I don't like to fly. I'm afraid of flying and I don't like getting on the road because I'm afraid somebody's going to smash into us and kill us. But uh, I've always been reading New York. Well, I like reading history of America through its major cities. So I got that. And then I picked up English, August, and Indian, like from India, Indian story. I cannot pronounce his name. I had this already. And this is a copy I had. And the copy I, re I replaced the one I bought at Finville warehouse because it was in better condition. This is a library withdrawal. It was taken out of uh, the a library in Zealand, Michigan. I think so. Maybe it was taken from out of... No, I, I think it was taken out of the Finville Library. Hudsonville. The Gary Meyer Memorial Library of Hudsonville. It, so anyway, I had this already. This is... I had this already, so I'll get rid of this. This is also from the Fenville Warehouse used books, Indian Frontier, America, American West, 1846 to 1890 by Robert M. Utley. He's a very famous uh, historian on the West. I have we have several books by him in our 
library, but this is on the American, on the Indian frontier of the American West, 1846 to 1890. Uh, it says here back, Robert M. Utley is former chief historian and assist, assistant director of the National Park Service and the author of many books and articles on the Indian and the Army in the West. So that's for my for our American West collection. I showed you this book already. This is a book my wife picked up a couple of weeks ago when she was in Grand Rapids. She went to a retail shop or thrift store and bought me this short story collection, The Hermit Story by Rick Bass stories. I showed this already. I have this already. I picked this up at the Finville Warehouse used bookstore. I had it already, but if I see a Jim Harrison novel and I'm not sure if I have it, I'll buy it. And this is The Beast God Forgot to Invent by Jim Harrison. Jim Harrison is one of my favorite American writers. He lived up in northern Michigan. This is, I think, a short story collection. I'm not sure. Uh... Okay, it says here in the back, In the Beast God Forgot to Invent, this American master gives us three novellas that sparkle with generous humanity of his vision. These are stories of culture and wildness, of men and beasts, and where they overlap. Uh, Jim Harrison was an outdoorsman. He hunted, he fished, he liked living out in the outdoors. He lived up in Upper Michigan, in the Upper Peninsula. He lived out west, and he liked to hunt and fish and just be out in the wilds. So that's why it says here, these are stories of culture and wildness of men and beasts where they overlap. A wealthy man retired to the Michigan woods narrates the tale of a younger man decivilized by brain damage. A Michigan Indian wanders Los Angeles, hobnobbing with starlets and screenwriters while he tracks and and stays native activist who stole his bearskin. An aging alpha canine, canine author of three dozen throwaway biographies called Bibliopobes eats dinner with his ex-wife at his overheated youth and must confront the man he used to be. Anyway, I really like Jim Harrison. I've always enjoyed his writings. He writes poetry too, which I just recently showed you a book of poetry by him. This is, I don't, it's like, I don't like to travel. <laughs> I'm a, I get paranoid being on roads and having cars speeding around me. And I don't like flying in planes, being enclosed in space and thousands of miles up in the sky and feeling trapped. But I collect travel books. And this is one I bought at, at the Finville Warehouse. Midnight in Siberia, a train journey into the Heart of Russia by David Green, host of NPR's Morning Edition. Yeah, I, I like travel books. Uh, there's another one here that I picked up, but this is uh, Midnight in Siberia, A Train Journey into the Heart of Russia. A, I, I read a lot about Russia, the history of Russia. Of course, Russia is in the history right now, is in the news right now because it is, uh, has attacked Ukraine and seeking to destroy the Ukrainian nation and the Ukrainian people. Uh, uh, let's see, there's a picture of Siberia. I have, and as you all know, I'm in Live Journal, which is an online blog. And I have a person who subscribes to me who lives in Siberia. <laughs> she doesn't really post, very rarely. Does she post anything? But once in a while, I notice that she reads my online diary, Crooked Fingers. But she lives in Siberia. And she lives, I looked at it one time, she lives right on...
oh, can't remember where she, she lives in Siberia. But I can't remember where. But anyway, she lives in Siberia. And then I picked up a book of essays I found at the Finville Warehouse, uh, the end of the the End of the End of the Earth Essays by Jonathan Frenzen. I, I read him. I really enjoy his writings. He's another American writer. I think he has a new book out right now, I think. But I'm not absolutely sure. Yeah, I have all his writings. And I didn't have this book of essays. Uh, the essay as Jonathan Frenzen writes is like a firefighter whose job, while everyone else is fleeing, the flames of shame is to run straight into them. For the past 25 years, even as his novels have earned him worldwide acclaim, Frenzen has led a second life as a risk-taking essayist. So, yeah, these are essays. I like reading essays because you can read them anytime. You can if you if you kind of burn out from reading a novel or burn out from reading some big clunk chunker on Russian history or something, you can just sit down and read an essay. And I haven't really got into this yet, but uh, I like reading essays and I like his writing. And then I picked up I collect the writings of Margaret Duras. And this is black eyes and black hair. A little, her novels are always kind of very thin. And I haven't read them, but I saw this at the Finville Warehouse. Uh, so I, I have The Lover by her and something else by her downstairs. This is translated from the French by Barbara Bray. So yeah, it says here in the back, Margaret Marretta, Marretta Duras calls blue eyes and black hair her first new novel since The Lover. This quote, the story of the largest, most terrifying love of which I have ever written. A young man isolates himself with a woman whose blue eyes and black hair remind him obsessively of a man he has glimpsed once and whom he has fallen desperately in love. Alone together these two live out a perverted, perverse ritual of attraction and repulsion of desire defeated and deferred. And then lastly, I have another, this is another travel book, Educating Alice, Adventures of a Curious Woman by Alice Steinbach. I have her other travel book titled Without Reservations. And I, I like, I like I collect travel books. And it's interesting how many I come across that are written by women who travel by themselves. I have a friend in Crooked Fingers. Her name is Melissa, who she's from the United States, but she's lived many years abroad and she lives she has lived for many years in Turkey and she travels the world she just and she posts on her uh, live journal crooked her live journal is kind of locked but she lets friends read and she's she's a photographer a very professional photographer and she chronic she uh, chronic was the chronicalizes her journeys when she travels and she just been posting many many photos of her trip to Japan which was very interesting and uh, you know hundreds of photos of her traveling throughout Japan alone <laughs> and she and so I like reading about women and men who go out who are wanderers and travelers and they go like to all kinds of wild places where they travel. And I don't know what it says here. Um, it says here, eight years ago, Alice Steinbach, a Pulitzer Prize winning columnist 
for the Baltimore Sun decided to take a break from her life. She took a leave from her job, friends and family for a European journey of self-discovery and her first book without reservation was the exquisite result. But once Steinbeck had opened the door to a new way of living, she found herself unwilling to return to the old routine. She quit her job, left home again, and only this time her objective was to find a way that will allow her personally and professionally to combine three of her greatest passions, learning, traveling, and writing. So that's what this one's about. So those are the ones I got. These are the last 10 books of the 30 books. I can put these away down the lower level, find a spot for them. And yeah, so that's what I got. That kind of gives you a kind of a taste of my literary interests, travel books, novels, American history, Russian history, good fiction, essays, short stories, 17th century English Puritan spirituality and theology. Like this is an Italian. This was first published in 1948 in Italian. Just been translated fully. Unabridged edition. Really enjoying reading this and reading about American history through the the history of the paper of the New York Herald Tribune. Really enjoying this. Reading this, the early, you know, reading about the 1830s and 40s, uh, really enjoying the paper. So yeah, so I hope you had a good reading week. You have a good weekend, and uh, yeah, I'm writing in my diary, reading, waiting, wondering if this is the end of the world, the second coming of Christ. So I don't really know. All I know is that. Um, uh, I just want to share. I I t tend to drool. <laughs> I've always had. I've always been a drooler. I'm not. I'm just going to be. I'm a drooler. That's why I'm always rubbing my cheek because I I forget to swallow and all the saliva builds up in my mouth and I drool. <laughs> kind of gross, but just got to be honest. I notice there's all these white spots on my shirt. White spots. And it gets into my beard. That's why I'm always pulling my beard because maybe I have a dead spot on the end of my mouth and I just, just drools out. Anyway, enough of that. Personal information, over information, too much information. But yeah, it's been kind of, you know, sometimes when it's kind of embarrassing in the years when you're up there and you're preaching or you're teaching and like at a class where you're up in the pulpit and this drool is falling down out of your mouth and people are watch, especially if you're in a Sun School class and people all around you face to face and they see this drooling coming out of you. And then you realize, I used to carry a handkerchief with me and then I would just, periodically I would wipe my mouth. But yeah, well, that's what's going on here. Hope you have a good weekend. Do pray for Ukraine, pray for the Palestinians, pray for the, the Israelis, pray for humanity, pray that the Lord will come quickly. And until next time, bye.